Hi, this is a uh, quick explanation of the bonus homework assignment. Um, I just realized that I forgot to name the record node. Um, so that's the first thing that um, you need to fix it first is to um, name the record type node because otherwise you know, the nodes won't make any sense later on. Um, all right, so once this is done, um, we can go ahead and try to trace the program. So we'll go ahead and open a new window for tracing. And this one might take up quite a bit of space. All right, um, this is the precondition. We have a global variable B, and it is an array of uh, five nodes. We have a uh, bracket zero all the way up to bracket four. And then each one is a uh, each um, element in the array is a record. It has a V and an N, so that's why you see you know V N to be in the same um, element in the array. And that's our precondition. So we'll go ahead and start get started with line seventeen. Line seventeen is invoking main. Uh, we have to uh, make sure that we know how to get back. Main does not return a value, so we can um, just say that our uh, return line number is post. And then we have to see what main needs. And you, as you can see here, main does not need anything else. There are no parameters and there are no local variables. So we are done here. And then we once we set up um, column M, we continue execution in the main subroutine starting on line 15. Line 15 is print invoke S1, B specifies A, 2 specifies I. And in order for that to happen, we'll have to, um, there are two steps. Uh, the first step is to perform the invocation first. Whatever it returns, then we can go ahead and print it. So the first thing we need to do is to reserve a column for return info because we are going to invoke S1. Um, the return info is going to indicate that we have to come back to line 15 and we are back when we are back we have to print whatever the value is whatever it returns um, I'm going to split the screen a little bit here so just so that it's easier to see what's going on and um, it also needs you know, some additional columns because uh, subroutine s1 has two parameters the first parameter is passed by reference. It is uh, parameter A. Parameter A, because it is passed by reference, it is a reference to something else. In this case, we use global variable B to specify parameter A. And if I unfold this, global variable B starts from column C and it ends at column L. So that's why parameter A, which is a pass by reference parameter, is also known as columns C to L. It is a reference to those particular columns. And then after that, we have um, the next parameter, which is parameter I. That is passed by um, value. And you can see that on line 15, we use two to specify parameter I. So just put a two here, and we can make the columns a little bit smaller. Once these, we set up these columns, we can go into the subroutine S1. Subroutine S1 starts on line eight, Oops. and on line eight, we are performing a comparison. So this is where things you know, get a little bit interesting, because we have to figure out what is a bracket i dot n before we can compare that to zero. What is A? A is also known as column C to column L. So the next question is, can we do anything to dereference it? And the answer is yes, because A is actually an array of five items. So A bracket I is doing the indexing. I has a value of two right now. So we are actually referring to A bracket two. But since A is really an alias of B, we're referring to B bracket 2. B bracket 2 refers to column G and column H. And the dot N here is designating, oh, we are only interested in column H in this case, which has a value of 4. 
4 is less than 0 is false. Then we can move on to line 11. Line 11 is about the same thing. Um, it's well about the same thing as line 15, except you know instead of printing, we are um, computing the value of the next invocation, and then we want to add the value of a bracket i dot v to whatever the subroutine is returning. All right, so we'll have to set up those columns. Now the most important part here is uh, what are we passing to a bracket? What is a bracket i dot n? Now we already just you know, we saw what a bracket i dot n is was it was a it has a value of four. So with that in mind, we can pretty much you know just copy and paste these columns and reserve you know more stuff here. We do have to remember to change the return info because now we are returning back to line 11. When we come back, we have a return a bracket i dot v plus question mark to perform. So that part we do have to modify. Um, the next part, which is a, does not have to be modified because we are using a, which is passed by reference to me, to a, which is passed by reference to the next subroutine. Um, so we are just passing the reference along. There's nothing to do here. And then we also have to make sure that we update i to 4 because we are using a bracket i dot n, which earlier we determined had a, has a value of 4. All right, so that's how we set up the new columns. And let's see. Oh, just not, barely not enough space. Okay, if we do this. Oh, it doesn't update correctly. I guess I have to do it this way. There we go. Okay, so once we set up columns Q, R, and S, we can go into the subroutine S1 again, starting once again on line 8. This time it's asking the same question, but the difference is I is now different. I is now 4, so we are asking the question, what is A bracket 4 dot N? A is you know um, an alias of B, so we are really asking what is B bracket 4 dot N. It has a value of 3. 3 is less than 0 is false. So we, once again, we go to line 11. And here we can just copy and paste the columns because uh, this part is identical. The only part that we have to change is um, I. So let me just go ahead and change I. And because we're using A bracket 4 dot N, it has a value of 3, so this is now updated to a value of 3. Then we go into the subroutine again, starting on line 8, and then we ask the same question again, but remember i is changed now. So i is now 3. a bracket 3 dot n is b bracket 3 dot n. b bracket 3 dot n has a value of 0. 0 is less than 0 is false. So we go to line 11 again. So we allocate 3 more columns. Except this time we have to update i to 0 because a bracket i dot n in this case is 0 because i is 3 um, before we set up column y. i is 3 here. Once we set up these columns, we go to the beginning of um, subroutine s1, starting on line 8. And a bracket i this time is a bracket 0, which is the same as b bracket 0 because a is an alias of b. Dot n is 1, because you can see that's a value of 1 here. That is less than 1 is less than 0 is false. We go to line 11 again. And this is the last time we have to set up these columns. So we copy and paste these three columns. And this time we have to um, pass along 1 as parameter i. Let's resize these first. So this is now 1. 
and then we go back to line 8 because that's the beginning of the subroutine except this time a bracket i which is a bracket 1 dot n which is the same as b bracket 1 dot n because uh, a is an alias of b uh, b bracket 1 dot n has a value of negative 1 negative 1 is less than 0 is true so at this point we stop the recursion and instead we return uh, on line 9 we return a bracket i dot v um, in this case i has a value of 1 so we are returning b bracket 1 dot v which, is, which has a value of 7 so we'll copy and paste return info cell Oh, excuse me, that's a uh, phone ringing. I'm just going to mute it here. So now we change this to 7. But remember, we don't want to evaluate the rest of the return statement. This is not the time to execute it. After line 9, we get out of the conditional statement. We go all the way to line 13. Line 13 is the end of the entire subroutine. So we are going to do two things. One is to remind ourselves that we have to go back to line 11. And then we have to deallocate the three columns that we allocated for this invocation. There we go. Now we're back on line 11. Line 11 now looks like this. Now because these columns from Z to AB are no longer allocated. We should probably just you know scroll our screen so that we are we look at columns that are still in effect that are that are still in use. And at this point we are evaluating this particular statement. Return a bracket i dot v plus seven. But i at this point is really zero. And you can see that b bracket zero dot v has a value of three. So we are actually returning uh, 3 plus 7 here. And 3 plus 7 is 10. We are effectively returning a value of 10. And that's why we are changing the question mark here from uh, a question mark to a 10, because we are returning a value of 10. After line 11, there's nothing else to do in the conditional statement. We get out. We continue execution on line 13. And once again, on line 13, there are two things to do. One is to look up the return info cell so that we know that we are uh, going to continue execution on line 11. And then the second thing is to um, deallocate the columns that we allocated for this invocation. Oops. Format, strike through. And now we're back on to line 11. Line 11 looks kind of like this, except you know i is no longer 0 because these columns are now deallocated. So we're returning a bracket, uh, a bracket i dot v plus 10. In this case, i is 3. So we are looking at b bracket 3 dot v, which has a value of 5. 5 plus 10 is 15. So we are, we are actually returning a value of 15. And every time we return, we copy and paste the return info cell, change the question mark to the value that we are returning, 15 in this case. And then we continue on line 13. Same old stuff. We look up the return info cell. It tells us that we have to continue execution on line 11. Um, and then after that, we have no use of these columns anymore. They are now deallocated. And now we continue execution on line 11, which now looks like this. Return a bracket i dot v plus 15. But i is now 4. And a bracket 4 dot v, which is the same as b bracket 4 dot v, has a value of negative 1. Negative 1 plus 15 is 14. So we are returning a value of 14. 
So copy and paste the return info cell. Change the question mark to 14 in this case. And we are done. So we can continue execution on line 13, uh, which looks up the return info cell that reminds us that we have to continue execution on line 11. And then we don't have use of these three columns anymore. So we can mark these as not used anymore. And we are now back onto line, line 11. Line 11, line 11 now it looks like this, which has, um, which is a return a bracket i dot v plus 14. But i is now 2. So we look up a bracket 2 dot v, which is the same as b bracket 2 dot v. It has a value of 2. 2 plus 14 is 16. So we're effectively returning a value of 16. And whenever we return, we look up the return info cell, copy and paste it, change the question mark to the value that we are returning, which in this case is 16. And we have to scroll a little bit here. And then the return statement is done. We continue execution at line 13, which is at the end of the subroutine. Uh, two things to do. One is to remind ourselves that we have to continue execution on line 15. The second one is to deallocate the columns that we allocated for this invocation. And it keeps wanting to fix my spelling. Ah. There we go. Like so. And after that, we now continue execution on line 15, which now looks like this, which means you know we can just go ahead and print 16. And after line 15, we go to line 16, which is the end of the main subroutine. And at that point, we look up the return line number in this case which tells us to continue execution at post, then there's nothing there. Uh, but we still have to remember to deallocate this column on line 16. And there we go. This column is now uh, deallocated. And then we continue execution at post, which means we are done. We are at the end of the entire trace. So I hope this is helpful to you because uh, there will be one question kind of like this in the uh, exam. All right. Thanks for watching. I'll see you guys in class tomorrow at 10.15. Not in class, but in the lab at 10.15. Uh,